choose to believe that the last game was more an indication of the real Cardinals. You're probably going to be heartbroken by that in a few hours when the game happens tonight, but I'm willing to take that risk. Well, tried to warn myself. Should really listen to myself more often. Good morning, Cardinals fans. Yesterday, we all wondered if the Cardinals' offensive outburst was a sign of things to come or just an anomaly. Apparently, the answer is not what we'd hoped. The Cardinals dropped the opening game of the homestand in pretty disappointing fashion, 6-2 to two to the Phillies. But let's start at the beginning. Luke Weaver had the kind of night we've been waiting for since the first start against the Cubs, maybe since spring training. He was sharp, he was aggressive, his off-speed stuff was nasty. He pitched to the first four innings with ease, facing just one over the minimum. In the fifth inning though, Carlos Santana, who for much of the first mm, six weeks of the season has been playing a lot like Dexter Fowler and Matt Carpenter, destroyed a 93 mile an hour fastball that soared nearly all the way over what I like to call freeze landing in center field to give the Phillies a one run lead. But Weaver went right back to work and sat down the next six Phillies hitters in a row. Meanwhile, the Cardinals put one lone runner on base in five different innings, but never more than one at a time through six. Really picking up right where they left off with that evolving hitting approach, eh? A couple of Philadelphia base runners in the seventh would push Luke Weaver's pitch count to 97, and there was really no reason to try to push him beyond that at that point in the game. So his day was done after giving up just one measly run and striking out six. In the bottom of the inning, the Cardinals started to rally after a leadoff walk by Dexter Fowler and a double by Matt Carpenter. Yes. Those two guys led the charge for this attempted comeback, and that forced Philly starter Vince Velasquez out of the game. But I'll spare you the details, they didn't score. And now here's your weekly reminder that Jordan Hicks is just 21 years old, very underdeveloped, and he'd never pitched above A ball until this year. I say that to preface this, Jordan Hicks had a rough inning. A leadoff single was followed by a bungled fielder's choice where Hicks tried to go to second to get the leadoff runner, but he was too late and everybody was safe. Then a blooper to left field loaded the bases that were momentarily almost cleared with a line drive to center that scored two more Phillies runs. Things got away from Hicks in that inning, but not entirely because his pitching was bad. I mean, his pitching is part of the issue, right? The contact rate versus whiff rate narrative is a real thing, and it's something that he needs to continue to work on. But that wasn't the entire story in that inning. When things just sort of snowball after a leadoff base hit, it, it makes an inning like that look and feel worse than it probably really was. Especially when the guy that comes in to relieve you then gives up a double to the first batter he sees, which just happened to be Odubel Herrera. In case you missed it, <laughs> the kid's pretty good. Sam Tuivailala did get the next three outs, but a 4-0 lead for the Phillies in the eighth inning made things feel not great for the Cardinals. The Cardinals are 12th in the National League with runs scored from the 8th inning on, and they have a collective batting average, for whatever that's worth, of 206 from the 8th through the end of the game. So that 4 run deficit felt like 40. But wait! Tommy Pham leads off the 8th inning, that's about as good of a start as you're gonna get, right? Well. Pham walked on four pitches, <laughs> the only four pitches Yaxel Rios would throw because, well, Gabe Kepler apparently has a pretty quick hook when it comes to his relief pitchers. But no matter, Jose Martinez can hit off of anyone. Then after a hit by pitch that took a review to get right, because Paul DeYoung is a beast and didn't even flinch at a ball off of his hand, the bases were loaded with nobody out for Marcelo Zuna. I know we've talked a lot about Matt Carpenter and Dexter Fowler, but Ozuna is in some kind of funk himself. He's still seeking his first home run at Bush this year. Yes, still seeking, because in that instance last night, Ozuna hit into a force out that scored a run and cost an out. 
Dexter Fowler didn't fare much better in his next AB, as his soft grounder resulted in Martinez getting thrown out at the plate. A Jed Jerko single cut the lead to just two runs, and then came a minor but sort of major moment in the career of Mike Matheny, when he pinch hit Harrison Bader for Matt Carpenter against the left-handed pitcher. Now, since Bader flew out to the warning track in right, it'll go down as a failure. But that decision was almost a philosophy shift, at least in the moment, for Mike Matheny. That was a situational decision, not a personal decision, and he doesn't make many of those. Now, for those who are arguing that Matt Carpenter's career numbers should take precedent over the small sample size numbers of this season, or that the confidence he may have started to build over the last few days could be wrecked by being pulled for a rookie, let me ask you this. What happens to that slow building confidence if he doesn't come through in the clutch there? I mean, based on this season's numbers, not his career numbers, but this season, what he's doing right now, batting under 200 against lefties, while Harrison Bader is hitting over 300 versus lefties. If Matt Carpenter fails in that scenario, how does that help his confidence? But the moral of the story for me is that in that instance, Mike Matheny prioritized the game situation over the emotional situation. And that's not something he's done often, but it is something that you'll see out of managers who are capable of pulling the right strings in important game moments. But anyway, I'm already tired of reliving this game, so I'll keep this part short. John Brebbia gave up a two-run homer, which basically took away any hope of the Cardinals coming back, although they did try their hardest with three singles in the bottom of the ninth, but nothing to show for it. So we're back to where we started with this team, wondering how their hitting approach can fail to adapt in game situations over and over and over again. I don't know how you change it. I don't know how you don't change it either, though. That was confusing, but so are the Cardinals.